Hey y'all, what is up? Matt Branch here with Small Town Sunday. <clears throat> and man, I gotta show you this. Would you look at that? It's beautiful. It is one of my most sought after guitars and uh, my wife Holly finally uh, decided she would uh, surprise me and give in to the hints uh, this year. It is the Studio J45 by Gibson Guitar Company. Man, what a beautiful guitar. So I thought I'd just very quickly go over and show you guys what I do to make sure that uh, you know I have the guitars uh, set up and ready to go the way I want to. So yes, brand new guitar. And you're probably thinking, well, Matt, why are all the strings already off of it? Well, there's just a couple of things I like to do, and maybe it would be something that you guys would incorporate if you're guitar players um, for yourself as well. And this will work with electric guitars, acoustic guitars. There's nothing super duper special about this. Uh, the first thing I do is I take, and you can get these little tools here, man. They're really cool. They've got the string winder, winder on one end. They've got the bridge pin puller on the other end. You just place it down raise it up and pull the bridge pin straight out. And then they've got this uh, these string cutters here, man. It's really cool, a really functional tool, very easy to use. So what I like to do is, uh, remember guys, if you're when you're changing and restringing a guitar, you want to let pressure off of equal sides at equal times. So if you're starting on the left-hand side, EAD, uh, or whether you're starting on the GBE side, whichever side you're starting on, loosen, loosen here, and then come directly across and loosen here. What that does is it keeps equal tension on your bridge. And some folks say it doesn't matter. Some folks argue that it does. I choose to believe that it does over time. Uh, so I just go ahead and just do the, the, the little extra just in case uh, to make sure it's maintained. So once you do that, I like to loosen my strings here. I'll grab them uh, three at a time. I'll put them in, uh, I'll grab them somewhere around in here, you know, grab them, snip them, snip them. Go ahead and unwind them here, pull them, and then I'll take the bridge pin, pull and pull, and then you're just pulling out, you know, so far. So the other thing that I recommend that you do is get yourself some lemon oil. This is, uh, some people call it lem oil, L-E-M oil instead of lemon, uh, but this is uh, Dunlop calls there's actually lemon oil. You can find little bottles like this. You can get them in much bigger bottles depending on how many instruments you have and how often you maintain them. Um, what this does is you want to get yourself a little paper towel. I've already performed this on this guitar. Uh, just get yourself a regular paper towel. doesn't matter what brand. doesn't matter if it's rough, soft. I've seen people use toilet paper, things of that nature. You're just going to take this and one or two little squirts here on the paper towel, and you want to come right down your fretboard in between all of those frets, and you just want to make sure that it has a nice, that it's rubbed in nicely. And like I said, I've already done this on this guitar. In my opinion, grain doesn't matter. You can go with it this way you can go against it doesn't matter and make sure it's rubbed in you do not want a oily finish uh you know on your fretboard you want to make sure it stays and you'll see the color change you can also do this on your bridge here uh or excuse me on the saddle here and um it just what it does is it it, it holds some moisture in there and it also keeps it uh it keeps it protected from finger oils uh dirt you know, just exposure, uh, it does help maintain, uh, keeps it moist. And so it, it just overall protects your board and you'll find that it helps protect your strings a little bit better, uh, in my opinion. So anyway, once I've done that, on this particular guitar, uh, I do like the, uh, the Dario or the Dario or however you say it. These are the Phosphor Bronze XTs. Uh, this is a 1256, um, it is kind of a medium gauge. It's, I think it's a little lighter on the E string, but um, but anyway, most most of your medium gauges are 1356. But on this particular guitar, I do not like the elixirs. I've always been an elixir guy. Um, I just think tone wise and the style of music that I play, which is that country, you know, a whole lot of strumming that kind of thing. Um, I I particularly like these Diadario X series, and they make them in light, they make them in a medium, they make them, I believe, in a custom light. Uh, things of that nature. So uh, make sure you check out the, the Dario um, XTs. I really, really, really love them. Uh, so once I string it, I do the same way, guys, that I do when I'm taking the strings off. You want to start either side, doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. When you put one string on, go ahead and jump to the other uh, side of the, of the body and, and do it the, the other string, okay? That way, equal tension, equal placement, I just think it makes a difference, but that's just my opinion. So 
other than that, the only other thing I wanted to show you guys about, there's two more things I wanted to show you guys about if I can find it. Here it is. This is, um, this is Dunlop's 65. This is a guitar polish and cleaner. This stuff works really well. Dunlop's been in the game with this stuff for a very long time. Again, like with the Lim Oil, uh, you, can, you can buy much bigger bottles of this depending on how often you plan on using it. Um, with this, make sure you get yourself a terry cloth or a polishing cloth. Uh, any jewelry polishing cloth, anything, you know, that texture will work. Uh, never, ever, ever spray this directly onto the guitar for obvious reasons. I would always spray just a couple of spritz, psh, psh, polish as you need to, and especially around here and here on the neck, because if you're using that limo, you're bound to get some on the top finish of your guitar. You're going to want to take that off because the more you rub it with just a towel, it's just going to rub it in uh, to the wood. So unless, it doesn't matter if you have a wood finish, um, a solid finish like this, or it doesn't matter if you have the lacquered finish or the, or the clear finish, this stuff works great. You can use it from top to bottom, headstock to back to bottom on the face of your guitar. It works wonders, easy to use, goes on nice, nice clean polish, and it'll definitely clean that wood up. The only other thing that I would definitely recommend to you guys is invest in a set of humidifier bags, okay? There are a lot of companies that make these. You can spend hundreds of dollars. I think this set is about 40 bucks on Sweetwater. Again, this is Denario. Um, it comes in a nice little pack. Uh, this is what they look like. Uh, I'm not gonna take it all the way out, but it's just a, just a sealed uh, paper uh, sort of bag there. And there's like a gel uh, slash liquid in there. And it just dumps into these packs like so. Uh, this particular one, you'll see how it unfolds. A pack goes in here and a pack goes here folds down. Once you have your strings back on your guitar, you can either lay them over top of the A string and, or excuse me, over top of the E string and let it hang at the bottom of the E string here, just where it's in the gap on the sound hole. Or you can put it just below the E string, let it hang on the A string and just below the B string at the bottom and let it hang on the E string. Um, it just keeps the relative humidity, I think it said between 40 and 50%. Um, and that's very important when it comes to uh, wooden instruments. It is super important to make sure the humidity stays right. Because what happens is all your humidity pulls out of your wood and you go to pull your guitar out of a case and the next thing you know, you've got a nice rise here or your bridge is start, or excuse me, your saddle's starting to come up or you just notice things like fretboards, uh, your frets, you'll be able to feel the actual frets, the metal from the frets sticking out past the neck, things of that nature. And it's all because the wood is contracting. So make sure and I would say probably from, gosh, I would say from probably November, you know, when the air starts getting really dry, October, November, uh, in North Carolina now, when it starts getting kind of dry or drier, up until about uh, March, April-ish, you know, when it starts kind of turning back into that spring and you start getting more rain and more things like that that, that provide more humidity in the air. Um, just make sure it's super duper duper important. It may not get you the first year, but if you don't do it, it'll get you the second or third or fourth year. I mean, you guys, just protect your investments, all I'm saying. Like I said, these are 40 bucks, uh, Sweetwater. So go to Sweetwater and check them out. Uh, and in this particular pack, the single one, a lot of people will lay it in the bottom of their case, put the guitar in and let it sit here. Or I do know guys that will just take this once it's in the case and put it right over top of the headstock. And that just keeps the moisture in and keeps the relative humidity applicable as it needs to be on your guitar. So guys, little lengthy video, I know. Um, I just thought I would share with you what I do. Maybe it's some stuff you'll start incorporating. Protect your investment, keep playing, rock on. God bless all of you. And remember that Jesus loves you right in the middle of what you're going through. See y'all soon.